Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm with Muhammad Faris from the Productive Muslim Company. Muhammad, welcome to Let the Quran Assalamu Speak. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for having me. Bismillah. Muhammad, I love gardening, especially in the summer. I like going out and tinkering with my flowers. You know, this is this is something that really calms and relaxes me. So, Muhammad, I understand that you think that gardening is like planning. How does that work? Because when I'm gardening, I'm I'm relaxed. I'm not really thinking about planning. So how does that work? We do plan. So if you think of the traditional goal setting framework, right, the idea is of have a vision board and then think five years was it happen to you and then bring it back to one year and six months and, and you know, and, and what are you do this week or, or today. I feel like that framework doesn't work for two reasons. Number one, you know, it assumes that you have perfect knowledge of all that's going to happen in the future. And number two, it assumes you have perfect control of all the factors that will lead you to what that vision you have in mind, which anyone who had a fi you know, five year vision will tell you those things don't necessarily come to fruition. So how do you plan long term while still understand these two limitations? You don't have perfect knowledge and you don't have perfect control. Mm -hmm. And gardening is a great metaphor because gardening, you start off with a seed and a seed I prefer is called, is called nawa in Arabic, which is very close to niya, mm -hmm. intention. Mm -hmm. So you plant your intention, you plant your seed. Now in that seed, there is the potential to become an oak tree, Oh, the potential it doesn't for nothing, nothing yes. right? So the idea that the fact that and that but in Islam we get rewarded for planting that seed, and we get rewarded for planting multiple seeds. In fact, that's why a lot of scholars would actually encourage to have multiple plans, multiple intentions, and get rewarded even if you don't fulfill those intentions. So this idea of planting the seed and then following a process—you have, I mean, as a gardener, I'm sure you know—you have no control over yes. the outcome. You might have some beautiful flowers and beautiful fruits, or it might not come out of beautiful mm -hmm. flowers. Mm -hmm. and, and you're okay with that, because that's part of the process. So the idea of planting the seed, following a process, and not detaching from results. Mm -hmm. That's a very faith-based approach for goal setting. And Allah says in the Quran, you know, um, Do you see that seed which you, which you sow? Mm -hmm. Is it you who makes it grow? Or are we the grower? Like, oh, was Allah, you're the grower. Mm -hmm. So it just, it almost like, it almost reorients us when it comes to, when we think about planning and goal setting, all those things that we're in control, that we can manage everything, we want to manage all the factors. A lot of time reminds us, upon you is the intention, upon you is the action, the outcome is not up to you. That mm -hmm. is what him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love gardening as a metaphor for planning. So it's about, it's about not controlling the outcome. Not controlling the outcome, focusing on the, on the free will part, the intention mm -hmm. setting, decision making, the thinking, the planning, you know, the ideas, and what I call the natural causes, right? Just like you water your plant, you remove the weeds, you, you know, make sure it's got enough sun, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Take the aspab, take the You effort. make the effort, make the but effort. You, don't, you don't expect that you'll be able to you don't, decide can't guarantee the results. The results. Mm -hmm. can't. When the outcome happens, you have two choices. Either you're in a state of sugar and thankfulness, if Allah kind of blesses you with a fruit that is beyond expectations or as expected, or in a state of sabr, where you know the fruit does not come out, or it's a terrible fruit, or it's a very <laughs> sour fruit, right? And you have and you have that state of, of sabr and perseverance, saying, "Oh Lord, this is what bless you. I'll take this." And think about it from I always think as parents, right? We always think as parents think, okay, look at our kids, and sometimes you have this what I call the carpenter mindset. Mm -hmm. The carpenter mindset is like, "Oh, I want my child to be X, Y, and Z, right? Mm -hmm. I want my child to grow out like this." And then when the child grows up and quote unquote disappoints us, you feel like, oh man, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. Versus a gardener might say, you know what? My role is to embed and develop, have the right environment, you know, plant the right seeds, values, mindsets, do my best, but I cannot guarantee the outcome. Think of Nuh alayhi salam, right? His own son disbelieved in him. And he's a prophet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Amazing parent, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But his own son not believe in him. So that mindset is so helpful for all parts of life. I had a friend of mine who took, uh, who did, uh, was showing his garden mindset. And he goes, man, you just solved my biggest issue with my family. And that is when I plan vacations. <laughs> he plans vacations to the T. And he goes, my family always ruins my vacation plans. <laughs> He's like, mm -hmm. I get so mad. But now I'm a gardener. <laughs> I'll put my seeds. I'll work hard. Mm -hmm. And if things go great, alhamdulillah. If things don't go great, alhamdulillah. I feel like it's, it's, it's the idea of letting go, mm -hmm. knowing that I've done my part. I've put the intention in. And I'm and inshallah out of the outcome. I pray Allah's kind of bless the outcome. And I think you remove when you're gardening, you remove that ego from the process, right? Hundred percent. Because you're not necessarily doing it for yourself. You're kind of doing it to beautify the environment or to to add to the environment in some way, right? Yes, and that's why the intention is so important because 
the, int the levels of intentions. You can do it, you can have an intention for purely what I call financial world of the game. Because I just want something out of this, right? You plan to you plan certain aspects of your life. I just want something particular out for mm -hmm. for yourself. Or you can plan for what I call honor, petition, fame. You can say, oh, I'm doing so people think of me. Oh, mashallah, so and so is doing X, Y, and Z. Or you can plan just to feel good. Some people say, I don't care about financial world of the game. I don't care about honor, petition, fame. I just want to feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. But then you can go higher. You can do things for spiritual contentment. You know what? I do this because it feels good spiritually. For example, I don't know. Some people like uh, you know they they would give charity or they volunteer because it has it gives that it feeds your soul. You feel mm -hmm. great. Yeah. But up until that point, that's great. But still about you. And the question is, can you go? Be, what happens if you don't feel good spiritually? What happens if, for example, waking up for the Hajj is, is tiring, or or you go volunteer and people are just you know, you know, verbally abusing you like oh, man, like why am I even volunteering? <laughs> Then you have to go beyond that, which is to do things to gain paradise. Mm -hmm. So what Allah doing is for you. And I'm doing it for to gain paradise, to get to get the reward for paradise. So yes, I might get hurt along the way, I might not be appreciated along the way, but in Allah that you you see this and you'll 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 reward me for this. But even then, you know, some of the scholars uh, this book read Ethics in Islam, because uh uh Dr. Netherway, he talks about how that even then gaining paradise is not the highest level of intention. The highest level of intention is doing things purely for Allah's mm -hmm. sake. That it's not even about paradise anymore. And it's, it's almost like unfathomable thing about that. You know, Imam Hassan Basri was asked, would you rather pray to Rakaz or go in Jannah? He goes, rather pray, pray to Rakaz. Like, dude, what's wrong? You, know, you don't want to go to Jannah? <laughs> he goes, going to Jannah is for myself. Mm -hmm. Praying to Rakaz is for Allah SWT. Mm -hmm. That mindset, mm -hmm. we talked to your point about removing the ego. We need to at least get to a level where we go to doing things for spiritual contentment. And if we can go higher, great. But let's almost break away from planning for our own selves, planning for purely financial world again, planning for purely honor, petition, fame, or just to feel good. Let's go beyond that. That's what deen requires us to be, be slaves, also Allah, serve Allah and serve His creation, inshallah. So Muhammad, how do you get to that stage where you're a gardener? What is the process that you need to take to change your mindset? Because you, you mentioned the carpenter versus the gardener, right? So many of us are carpenters when you think about, you know, let's say our, our business, our projects, um, our lifestyle. So how do we become um, gardeners. Beautiful. I, the way I do it is I actually start changing the language around planning. So, for example, instead of having objectives like you know, OKRs, right? Objectives, key results. Um, there's a company, Launch Good, one of uh, well-known companies. They change to IKRs, intentions, key results. Mm. The idea of instead of to-do list, I have an intentions list. Mm. Uh, the idea of instead of for every project, I like, what's our intention? So when I work with my team and my business, I'm like, all right, what's our what's our intention for this workshop? What's our intention for this project? And it just opens up a whole different perspective. Yes, the intention could be to sell X number of seats, to get this number of clients. But then it's like, what's our intention? Go, you go deeper. Like, well, actually, maybe there's something beyond this. And you start realizing, like, actually, the intention is to serve Allah's creation, to bring this concept to the deen, to, to, the, to Muslims. And it just opens a whole different dimension. So I think it starts with language. On our, in our day to day planning, start with intention. So say, what's my intention? Don't start with objectives. Don't start with, you know, visions. Don't start with all the, the kind of, we kind of be indoctrinated with the whole smart methodology and the vision boards. And all. So was, you don't believe in those things? No, I'm, I, feel, I feel like, honestly speaking, we just took that in. And then we're like, oh, yeah, we, we kind of, we try to Islamify it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's have this, like, vision boards. And like, and like, no, start with Nia. That's the most important thing. Start with Nia. And then from there, see where Allah leads you. Because when you have any vision board, see, I have a, Maybe people will disagree with this, but I have an idea that when you have a vision board and have an image of where you go, you end up, quote unquote, worshiping the image. Mm. That becomes the model of success in your mind mm -hmm. versus what Allah can give you. Mm -hmm. You might not achieve that vision in your mind, but you set the intention. You'd be amazed how Allah opens the door and, and gives you that intention in ways that you don't even imagine. Sometimes beyond imagination. Because mm -hmm. when I have set a vision board, it's based where I am today. Mm -hmm. right? I'm setting a vision board of five years from now, ten years from now, based on what I think is important today. But as we all know, as you grow older, you realize actually those things that I thought were important or <laughs> vision board, like yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that excited about it anymore. So I think that's why I start with the intention, change the language. And number two is, is making sure you follow the process. Being every time being more process focused, achievement focused. Mm -hmm. Instead of being obsessed with the results, be focused on the process. If things don't go well, look at the process. If things you're struggling with, go learn. I seek a coaching, seek mentors. Find out what's wise, why I'm not achieving my intentions. Why am I not moving close to my intentions? Let's see, memorize Quran, set your intentions, follow the process, instead of being, oh, I want to be half as in five years' time, right? We have this image, I want to be half as five years' time. That's an achievement focus. But what do you say? Well, focus on intention. What's your need, first of all, become a half of? Number two, what's the process you follow? And if, are you moving, if you're struggling with being a half of, well, A, fix your intention and fix the process. This will come. Mm -hmm. But you just got to focus on those two elements and not be obsessed with the 
And then people give up. Oh, I've tried so long, I gave up because mm-hmm. I did not achieve that image I yes. had in mind, basically. Mm-hmm. So all those two else, set your intentions, and follow the process, and inshallah, find the way to be a God. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Muhammad. On behalf of Let the Quran Speak, I want to say thank you. You've helped us become the most widely watched Muslim TV show in Canada. I want to appeal to you to continue to support us. You can visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. We also accept e-transfers to iGive at QuranSpeaks.com. And we're now on Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution. May God bless you and your loved ones today and always.